Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Sandwich will be 50 cents, young man. Do you think they have especially big number of sick people in Connecticut, David? So many drug stores, you mean? I counted 12 in Bridgeport before we found this one. I'm sure we're in the one Delilah Tucker meant. It's right across the street from the courthouse. Mm-hmm. Besides of which, it has the right name. Oh, you can't go by names in Connecticut. I'm beginning to find that out already. <laughs> Everything has the same name, you mean. There's an East Brook and a Northeast Brook. Then there's the Southeast Brook and the Middle East Brook and the East Brook Center. Aren't we lucky there isn't a West East Brook? That would be awfully confusing for the poor brook. I wouldn't know which end was up. This is Dorland's Pharmacy. But I saw another Dorland's Pharmacy on the street we crossed. Before we crossed... The one that turned into that one. I saw that one, too. That was C.E. Doylens, and this is E.K. Doylens. Related, I wonder. Probably, if you went back to 1765. Probably haven't been speaking to each other since 1865. (laughs) I'd be afraid to ask. I never expected to hear from Delilah Tucker today, did you? I suppose she's just as tired as I am of the way you men have made this whole thing so complicated and mixed up so that nobody's doing what they want to. The Tuckers want to sell the house and we want to buy it. But instead, we're all mixed up with deeds and mortgages and claims and this, that, and the other. They aren't selling and we aren't buying, and nobody's happy except Mr. Hankins, the lawyer. Look, Claudia, nobody wants to buy this house any more than I do. Why don't you fight for it, then? Like with the walnut tree you were so quick to give back to Mr. Jared Tucker. But we cannot take a chance on buying a house that we can't get a clear title to. From what Hankins said, Jared Tucker doesn't have a clear title. He had a brother, and no one knows if the brother is alive or dead. Everybody knows he's dead. Hankins knows he's dead, and Jared knows he's dead, and so does Delilah, and so do you and I. So does everybody in Eastbrook, I bet you 20 cents. Knowing it and proving it are two different things. If you don't sound like Miss Mac- McAcklehatton. Who is Miss Mac- McAcklehatton? <laughs> she taught us geometry. She was always talking about proving things that anybody could see by just looking at them. Well, well I'm honored to sound like Miss McAcklehatton. She must have been a worthy and fine young woman. <laughs> she was 78. Well, she was young in spirit. <laughs> Claudia, we aren't going to put a cent of money into a house that we can't prove is ours, no matter what Delilah Tucker says. But I I know they really own the farm. Because Delilah Tucker called up this morning and told you so? Mm -hmm. We must believe Hankins. He's our lawyer. Well, darling, keep your chin up. Here comes Delilah, under a full head of steam, and I've got a feeling she thinks I'm Samson. (laughs) Good day, Mrs. Norton. Good day to you, Mr. Norton. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Tucker. Hello, Miss Tucker. Sorry I kept you waiting here. That car of Jazz is getting more and more like he is every day. Getting so you can't hardly move it at all. I had no idea you drove a car, Miss Tucker. How's that? I said I had no idea you drove a car. You sound just like my brother Jad. He got no idea that I drive either. I taught myself to drive 20 years ago. Got tired telling Jad how to do it, so I went out and learned for myself. Well, that's fine. Do you want to stay here, Miss Tucker, or do you want to go somewhere else? How's that, young woman? Can't you quit that mumbling? Do you want to stay here, I said. Stay here? With all the noise in here? Not me. I'm going out to my car, where we can talk without being disturbed any. That'll be fine. I'm awfully glad you called us, Miss Tucker. Uh, My wife means that we are very much interested still in buying the house, provided we can get a clear title to it. Don't know what the trouble with you city fellows is. You can't seem to talk so as a body can hear you. 
Yes, down in New York. You ain't got nobody to say that anybody else is interested in. What a fine neighborly place that must be. Well, are you coming? Are you sure you don't want to sit in our car? Sure, I'm sure. My car's right in front here, and I'm not aiming to miss Rupert Hankins when he gets here. Did you say Rupert Hankins was meeting us here? What's the matter, Mr. Norton? You don't hear so good? Did she tell you that on the phone? She did not. Do you have any idea what it means? All she told me was to meet her here at the drugstore. And all Hankins told us was that she was too anxious to sell the house in the first place. Well, are you coming or ain't you? We're coming, Miss Tucker. How's it? Uh, we're coming. That's speaking up, young fella. That's the way I like to hear you talk. Isn't it awfully cold for you today, Miss Tucker? Cold? Ain't had a cold in 20 years. But that brother of mine got to nurse him like he was a hothouse plant. <laughs> Men. Uh, that's the car, isn't it? This here's my car. Isn't the motor running? I hope the motor's running. If it stops running, the three of us will never get it started again. It's running. What's the matter with you, young fella? Don't you think I can see that for myself? <laughs> well, the door's open. Get in. You better get in first, Miss Tucker. Good idea. David, you better close the door. Maybe that way we can all keep warm. I'm afraid it's going to be a little crowded in here. Close the door, young fella. I'll try. It's so cramped in here, I can't get a good swing. Now, if you two will stop interrupting me, we'll get something done around here. We haven't interrupted. Go ahead, Miss Tucker. That there country lawyer, that Rupert Hankins, told you we didn't have a clear title to our land because nobody knows if a brother Samuel's alive or dead. That's right. Oh. What's that? There goes my motor. Well, we'll help you start it. Oh, don't interrupt me. Samuel's dead. The house is ours. We're selling it to you. But if I told you that, you'd change your mind and go ahead with it. Is that all? Of course that's all. Where did Samuel die? We don't know, but he did die. Did he leave any children? You're asking an awful lot of questions, young fella. Now look here, Miss Tucker. Young fella, I ask you to stop mumbling. If you haven't got any proof, Miss Tucker, I'm afraid we can't do anything else but forget the whole thing and go back to New York. Well, young man, if that's the way you feel about it, I guess that's that. Oh, that isn't the way we feel about it, Miss Tucker. That's the way Mr. Hankins makes us feel. Uh, Claudia, we can't buy a house unless we get I a... know that, David. Miss Tucker, isn't there any way you can prove that Samuel is dead? Nope. We can prove it doesn't matter any. You can, Miss Tucker? Stop mumbling. What did you say? I said dead, and I have a paper that proves it don't matter none whether Samuel's dead or alive nor how many children he had. Samuel gave up all rights to that place, and we can prove it. You can? Does that help any, David? Does it help? Why, if it's true, it means we can buy the house. Miss Tucker, what kind... Miss Tucker, what kind of a paper is it? Now, see here... Jay, I don't want me to show you this paper. I've been fighting with that obstinate old man for a week. We believe it, Miss Tucker, but we've got to show it to Mr. Hankins. That's what I've been arguing with that stubborn old mule about for ten days. He don't even know I won. But you let me worry about that. Here it is, Mr. Norton. Let's see. This, uh, 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 this is a quit claim. Dated July 5th, 1906. It is signed by Samuel Tucker, and it renounces on his behalf and for all his heirs and assigns any claim he may have on both your farms. That's what it says, all right. Your husband sure can read, Miss Norton. <laughs> Lucky thing, Jed don't know who's got it. Is it all right, David? Is it? It looks fine. It looks as though this is just what Hankins needs. It guarantees the title. Why, he can... We can get it insured without a bit of trouble. Miss Tucker, you've certainly been wonderful. I don't know what we would have done without you. Now, you listen to me, you two. We ain't to talk to anyone about this. We show it to Hankins, but we don't tell that blabbermouth a thing. Tell him, but, but we don't know anything. Why didn't Jared want us to see it? You've got to promise you won't let no one ever know how Jared got it. We promise. Jed's ashamed of that quick claim because he won it in a poker game on Independence Day when he should have been parading with the fire volunteers. <laughs> a poker game? That's, 
That could happen to anyone. Sam was a black sheep of our family, and Jed, well, nobody in Eastbrook knows Jed even played poker. But, and but, they don't want him to know now. But still, Miss... Now, Miss... if you ever breathe a word of this to anyone, I'll... Well, I tell you, I'd like to have you young people for my neighbors. It's going to be a nice change from that stubborn old man. You see, my brother Sam was a no good. He got Jed drunk, and he thought he'd take the farm away from him, though Jed was the older. So he got Jed to play poker with a deck of cards that belonged to our father. Jed won the house with four aces to Sam's four kings. And it wasn't till next day after Sam left for good that Jed found there was an extra ace in Daddy's deck of cards. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, I didn't, I, didn't say I didn't either, Miss Tucker. Well, there's that old blabbermouth Hankins coming over here. Just in time. Hello, Miss Delilah. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. Uh, hello, Mr. Hankins. Well, a lot has happened since the last time we met. Maybe. I'd like to read you this quit claim executed by Samuel Tucker. See if you don't feel as I do that this clears the title to the land. You need to read it, eh? I, Samuel Tucker, for the sum of one dollar, in hand, paid, and other good and valuable consideration. Well, 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 Mr. Norton, that's exactly what it does. Well, that's fine. Well, we've uh, wasted a lot of time already, and I, I certainly don't see any point of wasting any more. You're perfectly right, Mr. Norton. Thank you. I, I have here in my pocket a certified check which I hand to Miss Tucker. <laughs> you have the deed. Uh-huh. I suggest that uh, we all go across to the courthouse where Miss Tucker will sign the deed and... Then you, Mr. Hankins, can have it duly registered. I'm going with you, but then you've got to come back here and help me start my car. We'll love it, Miss Tucker. That's a right neighborly thing to say. (laughs) Neighborly? Well, since we own the house, I guess that's what we are now, eh, Miss Tucker? I expect you're going to be right good neighbors, too. We'll try very hard to be good ones, Miss Tucker. Well, David, aren't you going to take me to the county courthouse? You certainly had ought to, Mr. Norton, as a landowner, taxpayer of this county, and a prospective voter, Republican, ain't you? The lady's got every right to see it. Come with me, Mrs. Norton. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When the butcher is fresh out of the meat you'd counted on for dinner, when the salad greens are droopy and you're inclined to feel likewise, pause for an ice-cold Coke and refresh yourself. There's probably one of those familiar red coolers for Coca-Cola right in your food store. You'll find them around the corner from almost anywhere today, and you'll find it's grand to be able to shop refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes. <laughs>